John Cochran Worley. Cochran was my mother's maiden name. I was born at home on Charleston Street in Caddis, Ohio. My ancestors had lived in that same county for uh, several generations. A very small town, but under 4,000 people. It was the county seat. I mean, uh, we thought it was an important town, but but it really wasn't. Of course, my mother was a uh, English and Latin teacher in high school, taught me and my brother both. My father was, uh, I guess he was a little bit more aloof and removed, didn't have quite as much influence on, on us as we were growing up as perhaps my mother did grandfather was the county judge there in Harrison County, Ohio. One brother, David, who was just about two years younger. As soon as we were big enough, our chore was mowing the yard. Plenty of outdoor chores. We had to uh, keep the garden cleaned up and this was in the uh, early part of World War II, food was, I wouldn't say it was short, but uh, everybody was encouraged to grow as much of their own as they, as they could. Everything was pointed toward victory and against Germany and Japan. So we, we always had a big garden. We grew a lot of our own food, canned food. My mother would do the canning but we did picked a lot of the food to, to be canned. We went to, to the United Presbyterian Church. We had a dog named Rags, and he was kind of a, a town dog. He, he had uh, been residing with a fellow who was a little older than David and I were and had gone into the military and uh, Rags was looking for somebody who could uh, take him out to hunt and things like that. He moved over with us rather than uh, we recruiting him or anything like that. We were always uh, oriented toward the out of doors. And of course, we, we lived on the edge of town, so we could just hop the fence and we'd be out in the country. So we spent a lot of time hiking around in the in, in the woods around Caddis. Also, uh, they had stripped a lot of this area for coal in the First World War era. So we spent a lot of time in what we called the spoil banks, which was the uh, where they had stripped. There was a creek, <clears throat> which was closer to town than spoil banks, so-called. Yeah and uh, we'd go fishing in that creek. It was a little creek. There were fish. They weren't very, very much big. fish, little shiners and things like okay. that. My brother and I were always interested in hunting and firearms, and my father wasn't. He, he was interested in the outdoors, but he wasn't a hunter. And uh, But we were able to talk him into uh, buying us a rifle, I remember. I was only about 10 years old. A little single, single shot, 22 rifle. It was our first firearm, and then after that we, did, we got some more. What did you hunt with the 22? Rabbits. We would skin them and, and uh, cook them. We ate them, we, yeah, we loved rabbits. We also were big on squirrels. That was our, our big game, rabbits and squirrels. There was a big segment of the cemetery that hadn't been utilized for, for burials yet. And we had our ball field there on, on that area. All the kids played baseball there. We didn't have a high school team, but so we were just playing what you'd call sandlot ball, played for fun. We had family dinners every, every day. 
a lot of homegrown produce and usually had a one meat dish. Both Thanksgiving and Christmas, we usually had dinner at my grandmother Worley's. She and Aunt Mary lived there. I don't know whether she took care of my grandmother or my grandmother took care of her, but they, they jointly lived together there. In those days, they had, uh, of course, we didn't have television like we have today or even had many years ago, but uh, they had things on, on the radio. Jack Armstrong. Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. There was an Orphan Annie program. Whom do you see? It's little Orphan Annie. Yeah, we, we were pretty much uh, addicted to watching those. When I was in high school, I, I told them my nickname was Zeke, so they started calling me Zeke. I graduated from high school in May of 1945, and the war in Germany ended in maybe June or July of that same year. The Japanese surrendered in probably August or September of that same year, of 1945. I was on the draft list, but uh, the draft board, they didn't need many people because the war was ending. So they gave me a deferment and I went on to Worcester that, that summer right, right, after, right after high school. Our family had a strong tradition of going to Worcester College. My grandfather and grandmother both went to Worcester. My father did, I think maybe at this insistence of his father, went and transferred to Princeton for his last two years and he got his degree at Princeton. After finishing that first year at Worcester, they had the GI Bill, which would pay yeah. for your college. My parents thought it would be a good idea for me to enlist so I could would take, be able to take advantage of the GI Bill. I went off to uh, Columbus, which was, you know, the capital of the state, to take the physical exam and be sworn into the military and all. What happened was they took a chest x-ray and I'd had pneumonia when I was, uh, oh, about six years old, I believe. And it left some scarring on my lungs. And the military, decided that they didn't need me. The Whirly name, we can trace back to uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. The house was called the, the Caleb Pusey House. And I don't know where the Whirly part came in there, but came in pretty early on. When did you first meet your spouse? We were in the government class together, that's when when I met her. I know we went to a movie or two, maybe a, went to a dance or something like that. We did meet at Worcester College, but I don't think anything much would have come of it except that his folks had a home in Chautauqua. John was there for that summer after we had met, and I think that's when things built up. And. Uh, we got married, I was, I was 18. So what memory stands out the most from your wedding day, which was at her parents' right. house? She and I had, uh, I don't know, I think maybe we hitchhiked up to Westfield. I'm not sure, but I think we did. There wasn't any transportation, we didn't have a car. I had the flowers banked in front of the fireplace and we had our Methodist minister and and a friend, some friends came and one friend played the piano as I came down the stairs. So I was very happy with it. What do you believe is the key to a successful marriage? Well, you have to compromise and, you know, be somewhat compatible. <laughs> How would you describe your spouse? My spouse is a very steady, good guy. <laughs> Steady, is that what you admire most? Oh, admire about him? Yes. He's just kind of uh, 
my anchor. He just takes care of it. What was your proudest moment as a parent? No pressure on which child made you the most proud. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, I, I say that we were very proud of all of them. What did you enjoy doing with your family? Well, we enjoyed going to the beach, going swimming, things like that, the lake house. Of the things you learned from your parents, which do you feel is the most valuable that you remember today? Well, I think integrity was the thing that they stressed, and that I think that we learned, learned well. Do you have any advice for future relatives regarding life, work, love? Well, find something that you like to do and, and do it. What accomplishments are you most proud of in your own life? Well, I'm, I'm happy that we were able to survive through good times and bad and, and uh, bring up a good family and and help them when they needed help in college and that kind of thing, where they got good education. What is one thing you most want people to remember about you, specifically? Well, I, I'd say that most th thing I'd most like for them to remember was that uh, I was honest and worked hard and had a a stable family and that kind of thing.